What's up, everyone? It's Zach with the Wicked Heavy Podcast. And in today's episode, I sit down with Alex Camarena of Silent Planet. I've been wanting to talk to Alex for a bit now. I knew when I made this, he would be one of the people I reached out to. I worked with him. I was his artist rep when I was at SJC Drums. Got him behind the kit. Um, just such a such an awesome person. And every interaction I've had, every show I've gone to, where we've hung out, just a pleasure to be around. And he was a pleasure to have on the podcast. I haven't laughed that much in a pod uh, yet. He had such funny stories. And we talked about music, of course. We talked about Halo. We talked about a whole bunch of fun stuff. And yeah, Alex, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your stories, man. So I really hope that you all enjoy this conversation with Alex Camarena of Silent Planet on the Wicked Happy Podcast. Alex, my dude. What's up? Oh, thanks for coming on the pod, Dad. <laughs> we here, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, I really appreciate it, man. It's been, I actually don't remember. I think it might be like five years since I last saw you like, in person. Yeah, I think I was trying to think about it, too. I, I, can't, I really can't remember the last yep. time. Um, well, uh, are, you're in a show. I know that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> show. What? What? Probably something at the Palladium, honestly. Correct. Pro yeah. Yeah. Yep. That is my favorite venue. <laughs> that is um, one of the best venues. Yeah. Besides the haunted aspect that I keep hearing about. Oh, the that's last few interesting. Times, the last few times I've been there, the staff keeps insisting that it's very haunted. So it's just like, eh, I don't really? really want to find out or know about that. <laughs> yeah. I just want to rip the show. And yeah. I just want to rip a show and get going. <laughs> wow. I'm yeah. Kidding, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Apparently sure. somebody fell off like the scaffolding or something as they were like, Oh no. Building stuff up top and yeah, just kind of like died back on in the, the stage. Day? Yeah, like as oh, they were okay. uh, either during renovations or while they were building it or something. But oh man. Yeah, he just fell and kind of splattered on the stage, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal. It's wild. <laughs> okay, it's still yeah, that's a that that's a very metal venue so that like, kind of <laughs> makes sense, but yeah, wow, brutal. Um, yeah. Holy crap, man. Well, okay, so you're in California right now. Now, we're in California. Is this originally home? It was. I was born and raised in Southern California, Orange County, to be a little bit more specific. Okay. And uh, yeah, as of like four years ago, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But um, our producer that we work with, Dan Bronstein's in LA. So Got it. we get to all and three fourths of the band is also from California. So okay. we come out here quite a bit to either do band studio stuff or yep. just like to visit family. Like I have uh, most of my family's all still in Southern California. So nice. it's kind of like a good excuse to like, Oh, we're doing band stuff. I'm just going to go visit my family as well at the same time. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Love it works man. out. Wow. Paid trips to see the family. You love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so looking, I was looking at the gram and I see you've got two big things coming up. We've got the Eternal Tour. Yes, with sir. Prada, yes, like, sir. Like Moths and who else is on that? It's uh, like Moths, um, See You Space Cowboy, yeah. and Great Haven. Wow. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That'll be fun. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was talking that to Giuseppe. Fun. Woo. Fun. And fun. Uh, I'm also very excited because Halloween of that tour, we're hopping on like a show with Motionless. And that'll be technically our first like arena show. Oh wow! Um, so I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> Where? Uh, what city? Scranton, that's... Scranton, PA. That's cool. Yeah, Man, yeah PA so goes stoked. down. Like they, they Dude, get they are metal. Yeah, the the Christmas burns red happened there too. We played that, and it was big festival. And now yeah. this thing's coming up, and I'm like, damn. Pennsylvania shows up. <laughs> I'd love Lanc to see it. Was it in Lancaster? The uh, uh yeah, 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 dude. I love Lancaster. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Lancaster. I always forget that's how you pronounce it. I yeah. always want to say Lancaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll they'll tell you it's not that when you go. <laughs> well, same with like Wooster. Yeah, yeah, Wooster. yeah. <laughs> I remember the first Wooster. time I was just like, "We're Worcester." They're like Wooster, and I was like, yeah. "What?" Oh, that's that really I don't even say that. that. <laughs> I'm from Mass. I just say Worcester. That's oh, Worcester. Worcester, <laughs> dude. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, see, dude, I'm, that's going to be fun. I see it and I'm just like, we're Chester. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people do. Wow. Yeah. That's sick. And then 
in the winter you have super bloom over in europe and the uk yeah it's like a like a early january yeah. we have also like a we're doing kind of like a 10 year anniversary show of the night god slept our first album yeah yeah um we're doing like back to back nights in at chain reaction actually um, oh that's cool so that'll be fun that that's like right around christmas time kind of like as a christmas new year's show yeah that's fun and then uh, oh dude, yeah it's gonna go crazy yeah and then we go to uh we go overseas for super bloom europe edition so yep. that's gonna be fun i'm very excited yeah and, uh, we haven't announced yet but we have another like two tours like in the works right now so wow um hopefully they go through and we can announce them soon because i want to go back to some some of these countries that we're talking about oh wow okay there you go that's <laughs> yeah. awesome man yeah oh all right well i'm sure we'll get there um <laughs> but as you know on this podcast i like to to take it way way back brother i love and it i want to know how music entered your life this is pretty heavy music right like yeah do you remember the moment or a time period where you just were like hey what this is music let, let me explore this and then what was your path forward to discovering heavy and how did your taste change from there man yeah so growing up my dad was a worship pastor at a church so both okay. of my parents were pastors and so i just kind of grew up and immediately my dad like just started showing me music and yeah. like put me behind a drum set any instrument would just like throw it at me so i can like wow. mess around with it yeah and uh so he kind of knew how to play a little bit of everything very basic not, nothing like advanced so he would like teach me what he knew and mm -hmm. uh i took to drums uh specifically a little bit more than the other ones and pretty soon like i i was like pretty soon after i had started drums i was already like kind of outpacing my dad so he was just like, oh, okay, like, seems like you kind of chose an instrument there. And um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember, like, the earliest. I remember, I mean, I grew up playing a bunch of, like, Spanish Christian music, like, okay. at churches. So that's a lot of, like, my earliest memories of music. Yeah. But I remember, I remember the first time I listened to something and like feeling a lot of emotions was okay. watching uh the old like I think it's Disney the Balto animated series okay. the, the animated movie. There's a song on that soundtrack and I still remember like the melody and everything to this day. But for some reason, when I was a little kid, like hearing that soundtrack, wow. for some reason I was just like, whoa. I'm feeling things like I feel like inspired. Like what is going on? Oh, that's amazing. And that was like one of the first times I really feel like I had any sort of like, like reaction. extra, yeah, yeah, reaction or like an experience to music. Wow. Yeah, and so like most of the time it was I was playing a lot of church music because um, my dad, and then I remember they would listen to a lot of Christian radio, specifically Air One in Southern California, which All is right. like a big like rock christian rock radio station huh. and one of the first heavier bands that i listened to came up on there was skillet oh, okay was like the first skillet album <laughs> and i just remember hearing it being like yo this is pretty cool and then there would be like small little parts where they would scream and i was like yo uh, i want more of that where okay. can i find more of that <laughs> wow and it kind of like turned into like me discovering like emery and then mm -hmm. Norma Jean was one of the other first bands that I like oh, the dude. first metal bands that I listened to. Um, and then was this yeah. high school or middle school then for you? This is this was like elementary junior. Oh high. wow, okay, yeah, yeah elementary junior high. Like listening to like radio, skillet on the radio. <laughs> um, this at the end of norm of junior highs when I started like when somebody introduced me to Norma Jean, and, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, in high school, like early high schools, when I bought my first album, it was Blindside. Um, mm -hmm. What's the name of that? It's it's the album with the kid, and he's holding up like a red, like the Eye of Sauron. It looks like okay. So yep. that was my first record I bought, and I loved it. And it was kind of more of the same of the Skillet thing, yeah. where like yeah. anytime they screamed, I was like, oh, I wish there was much more screaming oh, in this. Wow, okay. What is going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then after that, I kind of just dove straight into like as I lay dying, like yeah, 
Okay. I went straight to like just like heavy from there, and I was like, "Yes, this is what I've been looking for." Okay, um, so this... huge as LA Dine wow. way back in the day. Um, I was big on solid state fans. Yeah, um, I had like all the tooth and nail, like uh, what it, like the demo CDs. Yeah. Oh, like man, I had dude. the DVDs that had a bunch of different music videos on them and stuff like that. So yeah, man. So yeah. in 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 elementary, junior high. Were you playing drums like in the music groups at school? Not at school, actually. Um, oh. In elementary, I had, if they had a band, I had no idea about it. Wow. Uh, and then in junior high, I remember I found out about the junior hand, the junior high band on graduation day when they were like <laughs> they're all like yeah and our and our junior high band is gonna play the Star Spangled Banner or whatever and I was like we have a band like wow. what <laughs> so it wasn't until uh high school that i actually like got into like school band and stuff no yeah. kidding man yeah <laughs> oh that's crazy but at home you were you were ripping drums oh, or i was, was just... playing drums I, as soon as school oh. was over it was like just drums all day e either vi if i wasn't on video games i was playing drums and vice versa if you didn't yeah, see yeah, me yeah. on drums i was playing video games <laughs> that's sick what were you playing at the time <laughs> Oh, back then I grew up on all Nintendo stuff. Okay. And then once the first Ox Xbox came out, yeah, 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 I was it. like, that's me. <laughs> Dude. And then, so yeah, my whole family, my siblings are big video gamers. My yeah. dad used to play a lot of video games with us that's too. Cool, so, man. so it's kind of like a, a big, a big passion of the, at least the guys in my family for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Is, is Halo 2 online like a huge part of your youth? Like oh, it was my. for me goodness yeah. brother yeah, dude. <laughs> funny enough the first one though scared scared the crap out of me i remember i rented the first one at a blockbuster yeah and oh, i was wow. playing it and i was like yo this game rocks and then i got <laughs> to the library where they introduced the flood yeah, yeah and yeah. as soon oh, as the yeah. flood popped up i just like turned it off i was like nope not today satan That's i'm not funny. doing that. you know what <laughs> game did that to me dude was resident evil 2 oh i yeah, was I a bet. little kid and uh my friend would play it at his house, dude. I would hide. I was like, I can't watch you play this game, bro. This is so <laughs> scary. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. And even like, I think like two or three years ago, me and my buddy played the remastered Halo one just to like go yeah. through it again. And we got to that same exact spot and I already knew what was going to happen. I'm like 30 years old <laughs> yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. And I'm still like, bro, I'm kind of scared right Whoa, now. I'm like, so my funny, butt is puckered. Bro. Like, what's going on? <laughs> the flood, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, the Unreal. flood. Unreal. Oh, wow. Once Halo 2 came out, that was like the first game I know life. Yeah. Where it's just like, I haven't seen the the, yeah, the yeah, sun yeah. in a couple days <laughs> you know i came i did that too dude i gotta tell you a story i did that to max pain one dude bro okay. i had it on pc i was i won that game so badly and i was so into it dude yeah i was i heard the, they were making like remasters or something of that. they're remaking it i've never played that i've never played it i just remember because was that a playstation it was on, uh, yeah, PlayStation, and I think it was on Xbox as well. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, PlayStation Two. This is a PS2 game because it was yeah. like post Grand Theft Auto Three. Um, yeah, there, I missed a lot of the like PlayStation classics because yeah. I was never a PlayStation yeah, 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 guy. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo yeah. <laughs> Xbox, but dude, I was so into it in the basement. I didn't want to oh. like go upstairs. I had to pee, so I peed in the trash can next to the computer. <laughs> I was like, I can't go upstairs. I have to keep playing. Sorry, Dad. I have to keep going. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, dude. Uh, it's so the pee wow. and water bottle days. Dude. Yeah. 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 No lifing. I never heard that's funny. Um, no lifing. All right. So you're. Wow, that's amazing. So you had no idea that junior high had a band. <laughs> yeah, I had zero day. idea. Yeah. And then you're ripping drums. So in high school, how did uh yeah how did music go for you? And what I, shows were you going to outside of school? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> so in, in high school, all my friends in junior high, it's funny because in junior high, I was starting to get more into rock, but I was dressing <laughs> as if like I was into rap or something still, me and <laughs> okay. all my friends. <laughs> and then like, uh, once like end of junior high into high school, like it changed to like, we were all rockers and metalheads and yeah. started growing out my hair and, um, and then in high school, I, I knew for sure high school had to have a, a band. There was no way there wasn't going to yeah. be a band. So I I opted for just jazz band my freshman year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my mind, I had no 
I had no desire to play in marching band because I'm like, I'm never going to use drum line outside of high school. Like, I want to play a full drum set. Mm -hmm. So I would play jazz band. And my whole freshman year, I played jazz band. And then when I went to grab my books and everything for my sophomore year, I heard the band playing the marching band. So I went in to say hi to like the professor because yeah. at this point we were pretty close. And he was like, where you been? And I was like, what do you mean? It's summer vacation. He's like, no, it's not. You're in drum line. I signed you up. Like, be here tomorrow for band camp. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. So like I got there the next day and he put quads on me. I started off on the quads in drum yeah. line. And then he gave me the sheet music and he was like, here's the sheet music for the year. And I was like, I don't know how to read. Right. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know how to read music. And he was like, what did you do in jazz band all last year? I was like, I just copied the other guy. <laughs> like oh, wow, there was a senior funny. that was playing. So he had priority and he would get to play all the songs first. Yeah. And I was like, that's fine with me, man. You play the songs and I would just watch him play and then just kind of copy what he was doing Whoa. when it was my turn. Yeah. And so <laughs> I told him that he was like, oh, you you're so dumb. He's like, stay like come in early and stay <laughs> after a little bit. And I'll like give you private like reading lessons. That's cool. So, yeah, he, he honestly became like my second dad. Like wow. um, at a certain point, like my dad was having a lot of like legal problems and in and out of jail and shit like that. And he really like would pull me aside before school and was like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Wow. Like, all right, let's make sure you have a good day. And like would pray for me before school started and That's stuff cool, like that. Man. So what was yeah. his Mr. Did you call him like Mr. Mr. Something? Gone, Mr. Gone, wow. G-A-U-G-H-A-N. Wow. What but, a legend. Uh, That's what awesome. a legend. One, what there's two teachers in my whole like schooling career that I'm like, yo, y'all really like, like touched me, like, mm -hmm. like inspired me deeply. So like, yeah. Mr. Gone, and then my fifth grade teacher was also, which which she was like a sub, an all year sub, and she ended up being like one of the best teachers I've ever had. <laughs> that happened to me once too. I had an yeah. English sub, and she was so rad. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. cool. To this man. day, I still like will message both of them. That's like, good just to be like hey like hope y'all are doing well just wanted to say hi or something so yeah that's yeah. awesome man so he's taught yeah. you how to read yeah that's and sick. then spent sophomore and junior year playing quads and then my senior year i was drum captain playing snare wow yeah <laughs> and you chose you chose snare you wanted uh i mean he just kind of chose it for me oh, like wow. i i never really chose for marching band he put me in literally every band the school had to offer. I was yeah. in orchestra band. I was in symphonic. I was in a beginner <laughs> music class. I was in jazz band and marching. So he had me. That's he great. definitely had me in everything, which I yeah. appreciate now. It definitely yeah. helped me want to go to school because I was just doing music most of the right. time. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. Mr. Yeah. Calm. Wow, man. Yeah. Um, all right. And... Do you remember? Because I, I think I was in, I was actually wicked young. My first show, I concert ever went to, I was like five or six. It was Queen Drake. I actually got a Queen Whoa. Drake shirt on. It was 1995, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Um, do you remember your first like concert, whether it was heavy or not? And then your first heavy concert. I do remember my, my like first concert because there was a venue called the Showcase Theater in Corona, California. All right. It was like maybe two miles from my high school. So me and my, my friends were always there mm -hmm. and the first show i went there that was the first show i went to was at that venue and it was um as cities burn dead mm -hmm. poetic the classic crime there's one other band i can't remember but that Sick. was like the first show i ever went to and wow even to this day i still love as cities burn and and dead poetics especially dead poetic i'm such a huge dead poetic fan yeah. still and uh after that it just kind of like i would go to shows there all the time saw the agony scene there saw say Osin, saw yeah. abr there it's oh. like a tiny little like 150 cap room but it's uh, just the best it was like a legendary place like yeah. tours were always going there and it was so sick um, is it still there no it closed yeah. down like like a year or two after i graduated when i was oh, like 19 okay. or 20 um wow the last the it was like seosin's like home venue so wow. like their farewell venue um they just had seosin come and like headline for the last no kidding time. yeah that's why i was man. so bummed when they when they closed yeah. it down around that time too i was 
I was pretty much going to any Norma Jean show that was like within Dude. four hours of Southern California. Wow, okay. Let's <laughs> so dig into see, that. Yeah, I would go see them quite a bit. Um, in Anaheim, like House of Blues, they would play there quite a bit. I yeah. saw them there with, um, oh my God, who was it? It was Zayo. Oh, wow. Oh, who's the other band, though? It has like the the screamer has like su- a super high voice, a life not not a life a uh, life once lost maybe I don't know potentially yeah I just Go remember that. <laughs> I ha- I remember it so much because they were playing uh Memphis will be laid to waste and at the yeah. end they had like the tray you seen your guy come out the life once lost come out Madball Madball was on the tour so oh, wow. Mad- like all the vocalists of the whole package came out and did the ending of that song. And I was just like, as a little kid, I was like, my mind is blown. Look at this super band yeah, on stage dude. right now. <laughs> I, I remember I, when I first heard Memphis, I, I didn't know what to think. Cause that up until that point, I was still like frog boy. I was like dream theater, like yeah. it was big in my life. And like, I hadn't really heard, I don't even know what to call that. Like post hardcore, whatever we call Norma Jean. Yeah. <laughs> but I just remember being like intimidated by it because I was like, this is so dark and scary and weird. Yeah. <laughs> but but I liked it. I was like, I'm gonna explore this. Yeah. What was it about Norma Jean for you? For me, it was super dark. For yeah. me, I tend to, if anything, like the darker or like minor tones, like yeah. any anytime the progression is dark or mm-hmm. like everything just sounds dark and sad. I'm mm-hmm. in. I'm all in all the time. I got you. So uh I yeah, I just between that and I I genuinely like uh Corey's like melodies that he chooses. Yeah. Like I love it. So it was just like a combination of all that to really like I just really love that band. <laughs> I, I, all, mean, I all of their albums I think are yeah. sick. <laughs> also their uh uh I was huge Daniel Davidson fan. Their drummer. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god! I yeah, dude, hit he's, him yeah. alone too, for sure. Because as soon as he watch. moved to Under Oath, when he went to Under Oath, I was like, "Looks like I'm a huge Under Oath fan yeah. now too." Like I'm in. <laughs> that disambiguation. He's, he's yeah, on that he record, did, right? That's yeah, my like, favorite Under Oath album for me. It's wild. It's yeah. very wild. Yeah, it's it was so different. I remember being sad that yeah. it wasn't Aaron, right? But I was like, <laughs> this still goes hard. Yeah. Damn. Huge fan. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was kind of all over the place in high school, though, because I was listening to all that metal stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was recently showing the guys because they were asking me, like, so what did everybody listen to in high school? And I have like a playlist on Apple Music that has a lot of the like my high school songs wow. that I would listen to a lot. And it's like super metal, like yeah. a death metal song. And then out of nowhere, it's like Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> it's well, like, yeah, what the- <laughs> a lot of us, I would say. <laughs> Well, that was with the bands, man. It's like yeah. I, I feel like they're our Beatles, dude. Like yeah, they're, it'd be they're like, so big, dude. It'd be like as I lay dying, agony scene, and then Incubus, and it's just yeah. like okay, yeah, same. Dude, I really I mean, listened to everything back then. That's okay. Dude, That's cool. With absolutely, me. Incubus, huge for me. Oh man, like really huge. Morning. I remember view. when I man. when I first listened to Muse too. That was a band that I was like, this band is a perfect band. Oh my god. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I was okay, obsessed so with you them were getting, for months. You were just on the whole heavy spectrum. Yeah, That's sick. Yeah, all um, over. Wow. And <laughs> okay, at so were you when you were playing drums then on your mm-hmm. own time? Were you playing to all of these bands like just putting headphones on and just ripping? I or? wasn't actually since. So I started actually working uh, at a mega church, like my local mega church, when I okay. was like. 10 or 11 mm-hmm. <laughs> so most wow. of the time i was at school and then i was either at home or i i was pretty much at that church like five or six times a week wow <laughs> playing drums for something like oh i was so you like, were playing there okay, okay yeah i was playing drums at the church for literally any of any event that was like all right we need music it's like all right ask alex if he can play and then they would get the band together kind of thing were you so, the youngest in the band by far <laughs> wow dude i didn't know this this is crazy yeah. yeah yeah it was all so like the the main band was uh actually uh several indonesians but they were all amazing oh, yeah. and the the music director there his name is charles rumali wang he's still there wow. he's one of my he's a close friend of mine he's probably the dude that like 
I probably learned almost everything I know about like feel and like just mostly everything I know from music from that guy from just being under his like director Whoa. like under his wing for like 10 years or whatever that's um, unreal yeah amazing did he have an instrument was he a singer he he played he was a bass player probably one of the best players I have ever played with like absolutely nutty awesome um, but most of the time he was playing keyboards he was also wow. nutty at keyboards but any chance that he would be like, oh, I'm playing bass this weekend. I would get so stoked because I yeah. loved playing. The, you know, there's always that the bass player drummer yeah, connection. Of course, and of every course. time he played bass, I was like, let's go. The pocket's going to feel so deep today. It's going to be awesome. sick. Awesome. Um, so you even, so at the age of 10, 11, you were fully aware of pocket and like the connection. Yeah, that's, that's... all like, that's kind of like all I was drilled. Like I was never really. Yeah, I've never been like a Alex. Take a drum solo. It's always like pl play the same beat for the next fifteen minutes until yeah. it feels super good. Wow! And it's like okay. <laughs> I mean, you can hear it when you play, bro. Though, like, I think that's why people love you so much. It's like you feel it. I think of yeah. like when I listen, and I feel like when it comes to drumming and any drummers that like Silent Planet, the track a lot of them will think of is Trilogy. Yeah, because it's just so. It's so chaotic, but the groove is so good at the beginning. And then, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to go into that song real quick. Mm -hmm. That do ga do 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 the ga do ga. Is that like a salsa beat in a way? Uh, like it felt like it. I'm like, yo, what? That this... it's close. Maybe yeah. it, it's it's like it could be it, if you yeah. like just like change it just slightly. Uh, it like, definitely could be like okay. Yeah, the dash, the dash, the dash, yeah, the dash, I was like, ooh, this is so good. This is so good. Uh, but. Funny enough, that was actually a beat. I had written that beat when I was like a teenager, but yeah. it was supposed to be like super slow. Like that was supposed to be just like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's supposed to be like that tempo. And I remember yeah. when we were writing Truly, we we're like, we need some like cool like drum thing, Alex. Do you got something? I was like, I got this drum beat that I've. <laughs> like kind of had forever this is way too fast but i can see how it feels on it yeah and then i did it and they're like yeah let's do yeah. that and i was oh, like dude all right, so fire. It out. <laughs> yeah so fire yeah you can tell it's not supposed to be that fast because i actually i do like five ghost notes at this like back to back with one hand yeah. like do uh do that and there's like an accent behind one of them yeah so oh, it's like dude, it's, it like, is really is meant this? to be really slow and yeah. like that Oh, dude, and it's, it's just, just like fire. got sped up to crazy but it worked out i guess it definitely <laughs> definitely worked out man um, that's so sick yeah. so okay you were you were working you're ripping it at the church almost yeah. every day of the week that's unreal dude yeah, so then my life was literally just drums and video games if i wasn't at school doing music yeah. i was at the church doing music or i was at home playing video games like it's so cool man getting ready for the next time to play <laughs> music. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool uh when did your first i guess personal band enter um well i really wanted to be in in a metal band but there wasn't really any like local to me okay there was really nothing at all um so the next best thing that i found in my high school was a ska band <laughs> <laughs> no kidding yeah and there's actually there's actually a video on youtube of uh me and my skull band playing at that showcase theater it was like the no first way. time i had ever played there and there's a video on youtube still of it and it's hilarious because i <laughs> whenever it pans and you see me i'm rocking out so hard that it's like this dude is at the wrong gig. It, it oh, literally looks dude. like the original drummer at the wrong gig. Cause it's like a skull band and I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I and Scott can go hard. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was in a skull band in high yeah. school and then what was the name? I did Instafu. <laughs> That's it was what's up. instant tofu mish, <laughs> like mashed together. Instafu. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we won oh. our high school talent show. Hell yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was super fun. And then um, towards the end of high school, me and some buddies, uh, some of the dudes that I like had 
been friends with by this point from like playing at churches all the time mm -hmm. wanted to like make like a at the drive-in mars volta oh, kind okay. of band yeah. yeah so we recorded actually like a, a like five song ep and we just never did anything we literally recorded the five song ep played one single show and yeah. then it's just like we never did absolutely anything we didn't even like release the songs so wow. it's just like what the heck what yeah, were you yeah, doing yeah. Yeah, um, fun. yeah so after that i wasn't i was like just doing the mega church circuit for the forever until i met silent planet in 2012. whoa okay yeah. and so they had f formulated pre-meeting you yeah so so silent planet started in 2009 right when garrett was in college technically garrett is the only original member at gotcha. this point okay. um but he'll argue to say that uh the current uh, or the last rendition of the lineup with thomas he'll always argue that that's somewhat the og lineup because mm -hmm. we didn't really start touring and like we didn't really start doing things until that lineup like touring a lot more and like actually putting out albums and stuff like that. So, okay. Yeah. Unreal. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, Which is crazy. Then... It's been 12 years now in Silent Planet. It's wild. Right. <laughs> and, but it, it's, it's, it's crazy to me too, because it, it feels longer just because of how tight and like how I feel like in depth the catalog goes Yeah. and like just your songwriting style. But yeah, that's unreal, man. So 12 <laughs> years and yeah, currently working on a new record can we say that uh not, not record but new new material new material for sure. okay. yeah okay. yeah very cool yeah wow. so hopefully hopefully we'll be i think the dream is to have something new out for people like by the end of this year like, got it like, i don't know maybe like a little thanksgiving gift or something <laughs> okay okay um so okay you join sound plant so how, how did they find you or how did you find them so I found them at the church that I was going to the impending doom boys would go to that uh, church actually. Nice. So I was able to like become good friends with Brandon. They're uh, one of their older drummers. Mm -hmm. And I just started kind of hanging out with them a bunch. I ended up going to like San Diego. I recorded one song on one of their records, like just because I was hanging out with them all the time. Oh, sick. Um, <laughs> on one of like their the, on there will be violence <laughs> there's a song that i just hopped on and they're like yeah you record this one let's play so wow. we just kind of jammed and have a song on that record but he was playing uh he was on tour with for today and the chariot and a couple other bands and they were playing at chain reaction in anaheim and okay. at the time actually i had just gotten this was at a point in time where i literally had just told like at the beginning of 20 12 i had told myself i don't want to just be like the church drummer like yeah. i want to i want so much more i want to tour yeah i want to create music like i don't want to just be in southern california playing churches all the time right not that there's anything wrong with that i just wanted more yeah, for myself i had course. dreams of touring and uh so i told myself i was giving myself all of 2012 mm -hmm. to like really push music and try and do the music thing and if by the end of 2012 it wasn't working out then i was like cool i'm just gonna move on like get an office yeah. job or something like just look look at something else now like not not do the music thing is this like around are you 18 and this i was 22 22 okay so yeah you were, you were born in 1990 like me 90 yeah nice 90s <laughs> kid baby yeah and uh yeah that whole year came and went or right around october mm -hmm. um I was like, nothing has changed. So I literally was like, all right, time to move on from this. And I wow. had really long hair, like cut it all super short, got an office job wow. and was just like working at an office job, like Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy Brandon was like, hey, we're on tour. We're playing Chain Reaction if you'd like to come out. So in my head, I was like, cool, this will be like my last music crawl. I'll go like hang out at the oh, show, wow. like like have fun and then you know move on you know do the whole yeah. office office life or whatever and went to the show had a bunch of fun like played floor tom for the chariot on a song uh, and it was like <laughs> super fun um and when i got there brandon was good friends uh do you remember mark lewis did you ever meet mark lewis he did uh hmm. 
he did merch for a lot of bands. Most load, uh, he did merch for Norma Jean for a long time and us hmm. for a while. Okay, maybe. Um, but he's an older dude. But him and Brandon were very close. So yeah. as soon as I got to Chain Reaction, I met him. And at the time, Brandon used to always introduce me as like, "This is my little brother Alex. He's insane at drums." That's how he introduced me to everybody. It was. Yeah. I was like, bro, just say my name's Alex. You don't have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and so like by the end of the night, I was saying my goodbyes and I said bye to Mark. Like, hey, nice to meet you, man. Hope to see you around sometime. And he was like, hey, I just met you. But Brandon speaks very highly of like your drumming, your drum playing. He was like, there's a band here that needs a drummer is looking for a drummer. And I was wow. like, all right, I'll meet them just to like say hi, see what's up. Yeah and garrett he brought garrett over and garrett like shoeless garrett he had like cut off jeans yeah he had like a dirty tank top on yeah. so i was just like is this real like this is a prank this is some homeless dude <laughs> there no way this is an actual <laughs> and we talked for a bit and he was like yeah i'll go like he went back to his car to grab me an ep because at the time they had a, a little ep out and as he went to the car, I remember looking at Brandon and being like, yo, is this an actual band, Silent Planet? Or is this like, like, well, what's the vibe? And he's like, yeah. no, they're, it's a real band. Like, they asked me to do drums for that EP, but it's too crazy. I couldn't do it. And I was like, what? Like, oh, okay, wow. like, I'll listen to it. And he gave me the EP and I drove home, listened to it on the way home. And I was like, damn, this is pretty sick. I really like this. Wow. And it was just kind of like, I messaged him the next day and be like, Hey, I'm not committing to anything, but I'm down to jam. If you guys yeah. like want to hang out one day and like jam some music and ended up going, I learned like four of the five songs and went and like just jammed with them. And then we just kind of started talking. They're like, so what's up? Why aren't you in a band? Like, and I was like, Oh, I've just, I'm the person in the band that always invests so much. And then everybody else is like, yeah, sorry. And they just kind of bail. Right. So I was like, so I'm not really looking to like commit to a band or anything. And they're like, well, funny, like we have the opposite problem. We can't find a drummer that wants to actually do this. So wow. it just kind of like we kept hanging out. And then like a month or two later, they had uh, uh, they were playing Metal Fest, California Metal Fest. Sick. And they're like, hey, like you want to play? And that was ended up being my first show with them was California Metal Fest. <laughs> so uh, sick. Uh, Watch like Trivium and all these other bands play it was so sick where um, was it in, i know in california but it, i think it was in riverside, riverside cool. or somewhere like somewhere south south um but yeah it was so much fun um wow my first there's also a video on youtube somewhere of that <laughs> no my kidding. very first silent planet set is this yeah. like is this 20 20 2012 2012 it is. Okay. like late 2012 and then like it just kind of became one of those the inside joke is like I was never wow. asked to be in the band. I just kept hanging out. And then it's just kind of <laughs> like, hey, we have this other show. Do you want to play? It's like, sure. And then Dude. it's just like, hey, we have this tour. We got offered a tour. Do you want to go on tour? It's just like, sure. What? And then next thing, next thing we know, it's just kind of like, oh, here's the label contract, Alex. You signing? It's like, I guess I'm in the band then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Yeah. I just kind of, is... I, uh, what's it called? It's on the, the new girl. Um, by, or Reagan, Ronald Reagan in it, where you just stay around, <laughs> yeah. you just stay close around or something. Until... That is funny, man, dude. I had no idea. That's an amazing story, bro. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to your homie for introducing you yeah, like that. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, Alex. he's literally he's sick he's, at drums. <laughs> yeah, he's just like I. He's like, look, I don't really know you, but this guy says you're good at drums, and I trust him. He's good at drums. So you want to meet some a oh, band? I was wow. like, sure. <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> yeah it's a crazy crazy small world <laughs> and uh so you sign the deal and then the night god slept comes out after that or is that, did that yeah reversed? so i think at the time we had uh we uh so before that we i had actually recorded an ep for them we had oh you uh, did that. okay we cool. did we did last sleep so they had an ep before me and Got then it the first ep they put out after that was the first silent planet like recording i did oh, okay and nice. it was uh the last sleep ep Got and it. then that is what we eventually like shopped around and and solid state picked up and then we kind of wrote like another six songs to make it an album so was that crazy for you because you loved that label it was actually <laughs> it was even crazier too like the first time we went to like solid state headquarters in seattle because it was like it was like a bunch of cubicles that were all separated by a huge like 
the cabinet that separated all the cubicles <laughs> was also doubling as like CDs, like a CD holder. Oh, so they wow. had like just CDs for days. And That's like the sick. first time we were there, they're like, yeah, whatever CD you guys want, just like take. Oh, and we're cool. All, and I remember like Thomas and I were like, <laughs> Is there a like quantity limit? They're like, no, take as many as you want. And there's pictures of us li- like leaving with two fat stacks of yeah. CDs. I was like, yeah, I'm not passing this. Up. Yeah, it's, oh, that's like a dream. That's a I dream. I got like every Under Oath album and EP. Like I got oh, so much stuff. I was like, it's I can't in a box imagine. at my home. That was like a dream being like going to like, I don't know. It was called Strawberries. That was my CD store locally yeah. in Mass. It's like, can you imagine going in there and just have anything you want that's awesome <laughs> yep they're just like do do whatever you want <laughs> that's so, so cool yeah that was surreal even more so when we like first uh the other like super surreal solid state-ish moment was getting to tour with norma jean uh when we first got that offer i was like oh my god here it damn here it happens <laughs> here so, it is. Ugh. was that earlier <laughs> on uh that was yeah pretty early on in the cool. or not not super early on but i mean yeah it, yeah it happened and it was just wild like becoming friends but now they're just friends like they're good yeah. friends and it's like wild to it was just uh, wild <laughs> no i remember when i because i i got goose at the time he was in norma Jean. when i got yeah. him on sjc and i got to go meet him for the first time i was like i can't believe i'm meeting norma Jean because like <sighs> i mean dude yeah. i grew up like uh, norma Jean was everything bro still love him but i was like this is yep. so weird i'm backstage with norma jean what's going on <laughs> <laughs> um so i did i get it bro um who was drumming had- at the time still goose. goose oh he was okay yeah cool. it was goose so it was, it was sick one of the days uh we had an off day together in florida and it was just like let's all just hang out play some cornhole like yeah. vibe out got some drinks and it was like at the end of the night i had a small moment like Oh my god, I'm literally like just chilling and having an off day with like one of the bands that inspired me to want to go yeah. to her. Like this is crazy. <laughs> Dude, what a full circle fire. moment. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Norma Jean album? Oh man. Um Redeemer was probably the one yeah. that like really got me like going for them that I was oh, like, dude. this is the best band ever. So um, sick. But I also the shock Dude, <laughs> so good. So good. Oh, oh. I also love that they they did kind of like some of the songs on that record, like the beginnings had like clean, clean guitars, like ambient guitar leads. And I was like, yo, like metal and ambient. Let's go. (laughs) I love it. Um, I liked all Anti-Mother was also. I love Anti-Mother. So good. I Um, I always say it wrong. Meridional. I think it's how you say it. Merid- meridonial something like yeah, that yeah that that one as well yeah th- that like yeah. trifecta that group of three right there was like oh my god bangers i always thought the artwork to that album Mer- meridonial was so sick yeah like every time i say it, i was like that's a that's a sick yeah. album yeah. <laughs> iconic sick band wow. iconic and then fifth for a king tour was that was that earlier on too for you guys when you met that them? was our first tour ever it was um, okay. in 2013 summer of 2013 we wow. did our first uh uh our first US tour. It was Scream the Prayer 2013. Sick. And uh it was actually Impending Doom was a headliner. And I th- I can't remember if it was like two like direct support or like right under direct support, but yeah, that was the first time I met those guys and cool. like got to hang out with them. And Gideon was also on the tour package, oh, so got to meet those oh, guys. Yeah, back in the it was uh, Overseer was still a band, so I got to see Overseer. Um, That's yeah. sick. That 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 was a sick tour, but it was brutal. It was a originally an eleven band package. Oh, that's that's big. <laughs> that one shows with our like load in was like at noon one o'clock every day like when did it start it started like noon one o'clock every day oh, <laughs> yeah okay. it was like it was essentially like a small fa- it was originally slated for 11 bands and then two bands dropped out so it ended up being a nine band package wow every that's day still huge it's still Dude, huge it was gnarly it felt like it felt like warp tour jr like Christian Warped Tour <laughs> Jr. or something. Warped Tour <laughs> Jr. That's unreal, man. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Um, thinking back, like between, let's say that first tour and where you guys are now, was there like a, 
a certain show or tour where you felt like, damn, like, or like you, you specifically with that dream of like, I want to get out there. I want to tour the world. I want to be in a metal band where you like, I've, I've done it, man. Like this yeah. is ripping it. Um, I or felt record. like, yeah, I, I felt like every time we toured, I was super stoked. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until we did a tour with four today that we actually like came home with money. Like we each came home with like 500 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yo, like we're making money now doing mm-hmm. this. Like, and mm-hmm. <laughs> it was 500 bucks for like yeah. a six week tour. But I remember like getting home and like texting my friend being like, Hey, let's move in together. I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude (laughs) and it was it's so funny looking back now but it's like that was probably the first time i was like yo we can actually do this like we can make a living off of this yeah (laughs) and so funny thinking back it's like bro i made like 500 bucks in like six eight to week eight weeks maybe and it's just like i was so stoked about that yeah that's awesome (laughs) wow that was probably the first time i was just like yo this is like a real thing yeah this is happening (laughs) yeah just kept going man yeah before then it was a lot of like working as much as i could before tours and just having Mm -hmm. that money saved up so that when i went on tour i just had some money yeah yeah yeah. so unreal yeah good times (laughs) um that's funny man and it even like so outside of playing of course heavy music this almost whole time it seems (laughs) your main taste in listening to is still been heavy or has it changed over the years? It's definitely changed over the years. The longer I'm in the band, the less metal I listen to. I would say right now over like the last two years is probably like an all time low. Like it's, it's pretty, it's not very often that like I, like I, if I'm driving somewhere that I just like go for heavy music, Mm -hmm. it's, it's very much like just chill. Yeah. a lot of chill music yeah. i'm really big in like bands recently like i really into crosses the latest crosses yeah. album i'm huge fan um i figured deftones else? was probably up there for you yeah i yeah. like deftones yeah. i i think i like crosses more which might yeah. be like a freaking no i think a lot of, that's a lot of people catch some a hot take but i love i th- i personally kind of like crosses a little bit yeah. more than deftones it's different um i i'm if I do want to listen to heavy, I love Viljarta, dude. I just yeah. something it's, about it is just like wild. breaks my brain, and it sounds mm-hmm. like the gates. It sounds like I'm approaching the gates to hell, and I'm just <laughs> like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm down. There you go. Show me some shit, man. <laughs> Show me some shit. <laughs> um, that's uh, funny. So yeah, I love Viljarta. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I I have like two playlists that are literally like early 2000s music, and that's mostly what I listen to. It's like a lot of Radiohead, yeah, o- older Thrice. Like there you go. Yeah, that's Just, cool. I man. feel like a boomer saying that. Yeah, I listen yeah. to a bunch of old 2000s music, early I mean, 2000s music. I just went, dude. I just went to saw Creed. I just went dude, to the summer in '99. I'm so and, jealous, bro. When I, I tell you, to so bad. It's so funny because, like, I've been asking everyone I meet. The show, I'm not, I'm kid you not, I've been to a lot of shows. It is the best show I've ever seen, ever, bro. I, bet. I can't believe how good they sounded. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I, seeing anything like it, really. <laughs> I tried to get tickets to their Nashville show and it sold out within like three yeah. minutes. So I was like, well, and <sighs> like, like the resale tickets were like starting at like 300. No, yeah. I was like, no, nah, thank you. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Um, yeah. just thinking of early 2000s, I saw corn this past weekend. Ooh, Dude, it was uh, so fire. That's sick. I've yet to see them. I'm dying to. Oh, I'd love gosh. to see them. I'd love Bro. to see them. Limp Biscuit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fly wherever if they ever come to the States, Meshuga. I need to oh, see dude. them. Like, I saw them, like, I guess kind of by accident. It was at one of those festivals, like the D- Danny Wimmer festivals. Oh, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> uh, Alex from Suicide Silence, I had met him trying to like get him on drums. And he saw me backstage and he's like, You're coming with me, bro. We're going to watch my sugar. 
I'm like speaking quietly now because my kid's sleeping and I can hear him okay. crying. <laughs> so he like dragged me. And I talk about this in a different podcast coming out too. Yeah. He like took my hand. He's like, dude, follow me. And he like brought me side stage, but you couldn't be on the stage at all for Mashuga. So they like yelled at us, like, I don't know, whoever it was. Yeah. And then he tried to bring me to the sound booth and I, I didn't have for the creds. And he got in and the guy's like, you can't go. And the guy's like, Alex is like, let him go. I was like, I can't go. It's okay, bro. But and either way, I watched Mashuga, dude. Yes, that is the band you need to see. Jeez. That's probably the best example of I accidentally watched a band. And yeah, watched it. Like, I'm I like, had damn, never... what an yeah. accidental band to watch. And someone said it, but they were like, their sound guy is like otherworldly. Dude, and I remember that... being like, I didn't know sound mm -hmm. guys at the time. I was like, I didn't know how important front of house is, bro. It was like, I'm telling you, I didn't know any of my sugar at the time. And I'm just like, this is so crazy. <laughs> that and their lighting guy, too. Every yeah. time I watch videos of their live stuff, I'm like, yo, that lighting guy is literally one of the best musicians. It's yeah. not like he's yeah. hitting everything on cue perfect. I'm so like, crazy. Wild. Wild. Yeah, it, especially now, like, understanding them more and going back in the catalog and hearing, like, new millennium cyanide christ and stuff i'm like dude as a drummer like it's just like holy shit yeah of course yeah my sugar's sick <laughs> yeah absolutely i was like every time i pick up a guitar in the studio i just like try it. i was like asking mitch because i was like dude how is the bleed thing pot like how can you do that for so long oh, <laughs> i feel like i'm just like so tense doing yeah it. oh yeah, I can't that, even play that on drums either. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. So you gotta get it for like two seconds and then it's like yeah. nope. <laughs> I get Unreal. like one backbeat and then I'm like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So nasty. <laughs> um all right. Well, speaking of other so actually real quick, I do want to touch on yeah. this. Alejandro Aranda. How did you guys meet him? I love that yeah. song. And I and then I went deep on his own stuff and I sent yeah. and I was like, dude, like that song, I forget the name of it. But I sent it to you. I was like, this is yeah. crazy. Homie's he's, metal as fuck. <laughs> dude, he's one of the most talented human beings I've ever met. Like, yeah. like legitimately. Um, how I met him was actually crazy because a buddy of mine, uh, my buddy Jason, one of my closest friends, um, he, he randomly sent me him. He was like, dude, have you seen this guy? He's on American Idol. He's killing it right now doing mm -hmm. originals. Yeah. And I was like, what? Somebody's like killing it on american idol doing original mm -hmm. so i was looking up like his tryout videos and i was like yo this yeah i love this this dude is sick so like as american idol went on my mom would also send me videos like hey look i, <laughs> I really like this guy and i'm like oh yeah he's from pomona she was yeah. getting all stoked and it was one of those things where his record came out and i i was obsessed with his record exit forum when it first came out mm -hmm. And I, I, all I did was just put it on my Instagram story. Like I'm obsessed with this awesome job. And I tagged him. Yeah. Not thinking any, but anything. I was just like, if anybody's interested in some new music, check this guy out kind mm -hmm. of thing. And he responded to it. He was like, yo, no way. Like I've been to like 10 silent planet shows. Like, oh, that's I sick. love you guys. And I was like, let's hang out, dude. Yeah, let's yeah. jam or something. Like wow. let's, let's chill. And then, so like fast forward, like, a month or two later, um, we were in the studio writing uh, Super Blue. Yeah. And we're all like, yo, like, we're, he lives in LA. So I was like, we're in LA for the next month. If you ever want to, like, come to the studio and just hang out, like, you don't have to play anything. Just come and mm -hmm. hang out and, like, good vibes. Yeah. And he came by one day and, like, immediately was just like, oh, I think I have an idea. Can I, like, can I wow. shoot something if you guys don't mind? And we're all like, please. And he wrote the he wrote the lead piano thing for the whole chorus. And then I don't know where he was like, I might have a vocal idea if you guys don't mind. And I was like, get in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> and just like straight up like one took his parts. And it's just like, dude, this wow. guy's insane. <laughs> yeah. And it's just kind of been that ever <clears throat> since. He's that good is dude. so cool, man. And yeah, such a talented guy whoa and then for those listening or watching alejandro aranda is also known as scary pool party or like yeah. originally known as it's one word if you want to look him up and now it kind of goes by alejandro aranda alejandro aranda like, yeah yeah so sick dude wow yeah that's a great story he just yeah like, i have and what's idea. what's funny too is like we gave him the midi keyboard so he can do his part but we accidentally 
transposed it and we had no idea so we were telling him like yeah it's in this key and he would start playing he's like are you guys sure and like (laughs) we're like yeah it's in this key and we're like he's like i don't think it is and then he's like "Ah, don't worry i'll figure it out and like he straight up wrote the part on a keyboard that wasn't transposed to the right key just by like hearing it he's like i'll figure it out okay yeah i got it just push play and it's just like what oh that is (laughs) that's wild (laughs) no way yeah he didn't even have like a normal piano to he was just like oh it's all messed up but it's fine i'll figure it out and then he just like did it wow i was just like dude you're a monster what the hell (laughs) unbelievable (laughs) yeah badass man um (laughs) okay so do I always ask this question and it's okay if you have one or a few, mm-hmm. but any standout, like it's like, you know, the heavy podcast talk about breakdowns and you guys got a Ooh. ton of them, but uh, any personal favorite breakdowns from your journey within heavy music over the years, brother. Ooh, within heavy music. There's like two Viljarta breakdowns and anytime Ooh. I hear them, I'm like, okay. Oh. One was like one of the latest uh, singles. Okay. Of like one of the newer singles that came out i remember i was at the grocery store just like <laughs> like grabbing some stuff and i just popped in my airpods <laughs> and put it on so i could listen to it while i walked around and i realized like halfway through the song when that breakdown happened i was literally just like walking Dude. around the stank face like the Rowan grocery store cantaloupes. and i was just like <laughs> oh my god this is Oh, and like oh. I can only imagine people walking by me just like making the stank faces. I'm just pushing a cart, like looking at everything, like I'm disgusted. Dude, no, I do it all the time at the gym. I, I air guitar to breakdowns like no one's business. That's sick. I gotta look it up. So it's one of the new singles. Okay. Yeah, I would tell you the name of it, but all it's their all names good. are so good. crazy. I don't yeah. even know how to pronounce it. No worries. It. Um, but it's like the cover of it is like super colorful. It's like okay. white in colors. Um got it. The other one um over the last several weeks i've had um i think it's rational gaze is it the down the mashuga the down yeah 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 uh that's just kind of <sighs> been up there for the last couple of weeks we had a like mashuga day in the stu- and like after the studio one day where we just yeah. like were listening to a bunch of mashuga on the way to the beach and on the way back oh, so sick, and that dude. song came up and i was like bro this riff is <sighs> a riff of riffs man holy moly yeah that's... and like the, when he's like the some of the symbol stuff is like doom yeah yeah i just can't i love mashuga i specifically thomas because i'm kind of as i get older i'm finding that i really enjoy music that kind of gives me a straightforward backbeat quite a bit like yeah. if i always hear a backbeat i'm like i tend to enjoy a song just a little bit more okay and as crazy as their stuff is he always consistently has a backbeat so it's always, just like dude. oh yeah i love this i can get into it. this this is complicated <sighs> but yet the backbeat is there all the time <laughs> yes exactly because you're, you're like you know exactly where the one is even yeah, yeah it's just crazy bro <laughs> that's funny one of their my favorite songs by them and they just they played i don't know what was that big festival they like headlined a recent festival bloodstock maybe um hmm. and it's called like dem damage demaguire or dem demurge yeah i think it's yeah. demurge <laughs> that song i know this is like a weird thing but the that it just goes so hard banana 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 yeah I, I that is my gym song by far followed by yeah. everything by kublai khan <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that and uh, actually, humanity's uh, last breath had yeah. one last year. I think the shoot, it was like super simple. The ba 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 ba. It was like just like yeah. downbeats, and then it yeah, switched yeah, yeah. to upbeats, and I was just like, "Yo, that is tough as nails, right yeah. there!" Holy moly! It's funny, man. <laughs> like sometimes people we'll just do something that just gets you yeah oh yeah i know I, I, especially when it comes to like just manipulating the beat slightly i think as drummers right we like oh absolutely oh, they just did that okay yeah. <laughs> oh like, I, you dirty you know, man it's funny i was because like i was listening to uh uh the new kublai khan in the car with my homie before corn and he's like wait is that like off beat or something i was like well no it's very much on the beat but they're just playing <laughs> on the upbeat <laughs> yeah you know uh, so yeah i man. love that it's so good <laughs> i'm up. stoked because a lot of our newer stuff um is like kublai khanish in the sense of that like 
in in, in the Ooh. only sense that that it's like I have a lot of four just like do, da do, da parts yes, and it's dude. just like all right this is heavy I love this it's so <laughs> it's just so it can be yeah dude like less is more sometimes yeah you're like absolutely oh. and then the stink face like really gets to breathe because oh, you're just like yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I totally totally get it brother um, all right one more question before you go yes if sir you could uh if you you know, maybe you could leave the decision up to you or the whole band. But if you guys could tour with anyone, past or present, what would you have wanted Oof. to do? Oh, it's hard. Could be one. one or a few bands. Like, make a bill. <laughs> I mean, okay, we got Creed headlining. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, we got. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> we got Mashuga direct support. Mm. We got Bill Jarta. Yeah. Who else we got? I was trying to think. Us and then opening yeah. uh fuck it. Let's throw a curveball. Let's have Radiohead opening. <laughs> there you go. That's a crazy tour, bro. People are gonna sellouts everywhere, baby. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh my dude, it would be that would that actually would be so wild. The walkout after Radiohead would be crazy. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those people are like, I'm just here for Radiohead. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah. I don't know about none of this screaming music. <laughs> I'd be staying for Creed, man. I would I'm absolutely you, fucking blew my my wife so sick. Now. Dude. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, bro, like I gotta just end it on that because like people, everyone, everyone was so excited to be there and singing so hard. Like I just get goosebumps. But yeah, oh, I love my it. wife's I'm... so sick of it. I'm just going around the house going, "Are you ready?" She's not ready. She's not ready. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for you that you had that experience. I'm, Thank you, I'm man. jealous. Both happy and jealous. Yeah, it was fucking sick. <laughs> I love well, it. oh, dude, this was awesome, man. I I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Ooh. Sorry for. And most people won't know but zach's been texting me about this oh. <laughs> for weeks now and i'm it's my life has been chaotic for the last month and it's like i just sometimes forget to reply my bro <laughs> at some it's... point i was like sorry i'm the worst person in the world no let's do it anytime please yeah. yes <laughs> it's all good brother all good no i sincerely appreciate it and i am shooting to come to the palladium show yes H please let me know eternal so i'll let you know i would love it's that i'd love to see you Fridays yes, are good sir. for dads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, man. But again, thank you, dude. Yeah, thanks and for I'll having me. Yeah, and I'll catch you soon. Yeah. Yee. Later. Later.